Welcome back to Lair Academy. It's Mickey again, and in this lesson, we're going to be talking about caching in Laravel. What we're going to be working with today is an example blog post. If we load it up in Chrome, you can see we have many posts, and if we click on one of the posts, we have many comments, and each of these comments has a user. As you can tell, I've already created the controllers, views, migrations, models, etc., so we don't have to do anything here, and you can download it through GitHub. Now before we get started with caching, we want to make sure that our query is optimized and running at its best performance. At this point, we could install a debug bar, but we're going to keep it pretty simple. We can hook into the database events, and in particular the query executed event, and we could spit out some information to our log file. Let's switch back over to Sublime Text, and inside our routes, let's load up the web.php. At the very top, we'll tell Laravel to listen for an event. So we'll say event listen, followed by illuminate, database, events, and then query execute a class. This is going to accept an anonymous function, and the parameter is going to be the query execute a class itself. So we'll just copy and paste it, and add the parameter query. Inside our anonymous function, we're going to use the executed query to log out the information. We'll use the facade logger, and let's just store the query's SQL and the time it took for the query to run. Now let's save everything, and before we load up Chrome, let's load up our terminal, and I'm going to tail the log file. So I'll say tail minus F, go into storage, logs, and then laravel.log. Now switching back to Chrome, I'll put Chrome on the left, and our terminal on the right. Let's refresh our blog post, and you can see over here on our terminal, we have a whole bunch of queries coming through, and it's quite a lot, and this is something that we want to tackle before we cache any results. If we switch back to Sublime Text, let's load up the controller inside HTTP controllers and blog controller. You can see here we're using route model binding, and we can still eagerly load the relationships that we need. We could just say post load, and the two relationships that we need are going to be comments, and then for each of those comments, we're going to need the user attached to that comment. If we load Chrome in our terminal backup and we refresh the page, hopefully you should see a lot less queries in our terminal. You can see that currently we only have about three in there. And this means that this is definitely something that we can work with and start caching. So let's switch over to Sublime Text one last time. And to cache the post, let's actually extract a lot of this out into a repository. I feel like this is a very good opportunity for it. Inside app, we'll make a new folder, call it repositories. And then within this folder, let's make a new file, and let's call this postrepository.php. Just like any other class in Laravel, we'll start with our namespace, and we're in app repositories. And next, we'll have the class name itself, which is post repository. And finally, let's write our first function here. We'll keep things simple by naming our method get and accepting an ID. This ID is going to be the ID from the post itself. So let's make sure that we locate the post within our database. If we switch back to our controller, we can no longer load the post here. So let's copy that out. We're going to be just passing in the ID. Now in our controller, let's set it up to use our post repository. So we'll say use app repositories and post repository. Now let's create a variable to hold our post repository. So we'll at the top of the class, we'll just say var post repository. And let's fill it in through a constructor. And we need to make sure within our constructor that we pass the post repository variable through and Laravel will automatically handle this for us. And finally, within our constructor, we can just assign the classes post repository to the one that Laravel creates for us automatically. Now we can switch back to our view function down here at the bottom. And we can get our post variable by saying post equals this post repository, and then just call the get function passing the ID. Now, if we switch back to our post repository, we want to make sure that we load the post relationships. So we're going to say post load, and just like before, we'll have comments, and then comments.user. And finally, let's return the post. 
And because we're using our post class, let's make sure we throw on the use statement here so we don't have any errors. When we switch back to Chrome and we hit refresh, we've basically just duplicated what we had before. Now we can move on to caching. Instead of going to the database every single time, we want to make sure that we check the cache. We'll create a cache ID variable, and in our constructor, let's load it up with post dot, make sure we refer to the class, and within the get, we need to check the cache to see if this ID exists. So first, we're going to say this cache ID, and we're going to append onto it the ID. So this will come out to something like post.1, or 2, or 3, etc, etc. And now that we have our key that we're going to keep reusing, we could just say post equals cache get. We want to check the cache ID. And if we don't find anything, let's just return null. Now we have to do one final check here, because sometimes the cache is going to be empty. So we have to say if we don't have a post, then let's load this post through the database. So we'll take this code here, an insider if statement, we'll just say find the post where the ID is equal to the ID that we pass in. We want to grab the first one and make sure that we pass in the relationships. Next, we want to cache the post. So we could say cache put and we're going to refer to the key that we generated and next we want to cache the post itself and finally is the time in minutes that we want to cache it for. We'll just set it to one minute for this example. So if we take just a step back we're going to look in the cache first for the post ID. If we don't have one then we'll go to the database and we'll load it through the eloquent model and finally we'll put it in the cache and return it. You can see we don't have to change anything in our view here. So let's go into Chrome and let's try it out. Now when we refresh, we should see our queries once. And let me hit enter and we'll refresh again. And you can see that it's not going to the database. It's just loading it from the cache. So now we can refresh this page as much as we want. And because of our repository, it's going to load it through the cache as long as it's within the minute that we've set it at. One thing to be aware of, if for say we go to our post and we add a comment or we change the title or we just we edit something within here, we're going to have to bust the cache or what's basically saying forgetting the cached item. Because we already have our key, we could easily create a method and let's just call this method something like forget cache and in this method we'll use the cache facade and we'll just say cache forget followed by the key. Now the one thing that we're going to have to do is pass the ID in here and just append the key and the ID together. Now whenever something changes we just have to call the forget cache on our repository and that will remove it from our cached items so whenever we or our user comes back and refreshes this page it will be pulled from the database and then add it to the cache once again. So it might have seemed like a lot of work to get here but our query is optimized and our caching is working just fine. That brings this lesson to a close. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next one.